Andre Lord Evil Jackman is freed of murder. That's our top story in our Barbados Today evening news update for Friday, April the 6th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. The infamous Andre Lord Evil Jackman and three other St. Lucy men have been freed of the murder of Charlie Doon. Doon died in April 2014 after he was shot while working at a bar at the corner of Nelson Street and Wellington Street in the city. Jackman, also known as Punchy of Stroud Bay, Crab Hill, Xavier Ronaldo Waltz of Archers Road, Crab Hill, Rory St. Clair Thomas of Grape Hall, and Shane Akeem Omar Bab of Friars Well were all charged with his death. However, when the matter came up in the Supreme Court today, Principal Crown Counsel Alliston Seal acting on the instructions of the Deputy of the Director of Public Prosecutions, Donna Bob Agard, told Justice Randall Worrell that there was not sufficient evidence to sustain a case against the men. And as such, the Crown was withdrawing the charges. Meanwhile, police have confirmed they are investigating a major drug seizure at the Bridgetown Port. But Public Relations Officer Acting Inspector Rodney Innes says he has no further information at this stage. In other news now, Barbadians at home and in the diaspora in the United States are mourning the sudden death of this country's Consul General to Miami, Colin Seifert Myers. Speaking to Barbados today via telephone from her Miami office, a shocked Deputy Consul General Gail Thompson said Myers passed away this morning from an apparent heart attack. Thompson, who said she was still trying to come to grips with his death, noted that her boss had not shown any signs of illness leading up to his passing. She said he would be greatly missed by staff. I enjoyed working with, with, uh, with Consul General Mears. He was he's a person who, well, how should I say? He, you know, he expects us to do, to do good. And to and to um to carry out his you know sorry it's, it's, today is not the best day for me because I am in shock. Right? No, As a boss, he's a very good boss. He's very I like he's a family man, which I really um admire for that. Um, in the office, he he's very I thought he was very sympathetic and you know, empathetic and basically I think the staff liked him. Yes, he did have a bit of a temper, but um, he knew what, what to do when, um, you know, he was saying. But he was a good person to work with. And the Deputy Consul General also recalled with a sense of sadness the fact that staff was all set to have a celebratory luncheon today in honor of Mears' recent appointment as Dean of the Diplomatic Corps. We were looking forward. He, he actually had become the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, and today was his, going to be his first day where we have the Corps has a luncheon. And it was going to be his debut. We just didn't make it to the debut, unfortunately. Oh. Oh. We were all looking forward to it, and I felt so proud of him. Retired Barbados Ambassador to CARICOM, Robert Bobby Morris, is pointing an accusing finger at the former owning Arthur administration for overseeing the start of the myriad downgrades currently being experienced by this country. Morris, a former trade union leader, was delivering another in the series of Democratic Labour Party lunchtime lectures at the DLP George Street headquarters this afternoon. He said it was Arthur's government that took a growing economy from his predecessor Erskine Sandiford, now Sir Lloyd, and drove the country downhill with the restoration of the infamous 8% salary cut for public officers. As soon as he put on, put back on the eight percent cut, it started to come back down again. Understand this? They don't talk about this. As soon as that eight percent cut was restored, the whole productivity level shifted back to where it was before. And since then, you've been on a downhill path. And then he went to the markets and started a glut of borrowing. And I want you to remember, because we're too convenient sometimes, that. The downgrades of Barbados by Standard and Poor and Moody started with Owen Arthur. All the big click whole thing and so on that we have just fixed that. Started and then. 
taking the NS money and building that building down West Terrace. We give it the name of the man who is reaping and now owns it basically. And find out where the money went that we had to be paying the millions and millions of dollars for those mistakes and the own. In other news, chronic defaulters of land tax could have their properties up for sale by July this year. That's the word from Acting Revenue Commissioner Vin Ford. He was speaking to the media on the sidelines of the Barbados Revenue Authority's tax fair at Hero Square this morning. Ford explained that recently 5,000 land tax bills were returned, many of which were from defaulters trying to hide from the BRA. If you are in arrears for 90 days, you are eligible to have your properties sold. Now you know that 90 days basically is, uh, although it may be law, it is not really feasible because anything could have happened in 90 days. But what happened, we also have persons who have been raised for at least 20 years. And what some people do when we realize that they're in a raise and we try to contact them, sometimes they come in and they pay a little bit just to get us off their box and then they move off again. And those are the persons who I deem as chronic defaulters. So chronic defaulters are the ones that we will be targeting. There, and, and it goes for uh, quite a number of years. It, it ranges from five years to over 20 years. There's regional and international news after this short break. with news from the region now. Antigua and Barbados Prime Minister Gaston Brown has approved the suspension of the police commissioner. Chairman of the Police Service Commission, Kelvin John, received Prime Minister Brown's approval during yesterday's cabinet meeting. Police Commissioner Wendell Robinson's suspension takes effect immediately in the wake of a probe into allegations against a top cop by three police officers. In a letter dated April 5, Chairman of the Police Service Commission, Kelvin John Esquire, ordered the top cops to hand over command of the Royal Police Force to DCP Rodney. Robinson must also surrender control of the fire brigade and everything else on his control as police commissioner. The suspension stems from complaints made against the top cop by three members of the police force. Chairman John wrote the complaints warrant the Commission's consideration and action as they are inimical to the discipline and moral of the Royal Police Force of Antigua and Barbuda. The suspension has taken immediate effect, and Robinson will remain on suspension until the Commission decides otherwise. The Chairman wrote during the period of his suspension, Robinson will be paid a suspension allowance in accordance with Section 37 of the Police Act and Section 16.2 of the Regulations. The letter to the Commissioner was copied to Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown, Public Safety Minister, the Honorable Stedroy Benjamin, and the man who is now in charge of the force, Athlete Rodney. And on the global front, the Trump administration is unleashing additional sanctions against seven Russian oligarchs with ties to President Vladimir Putin, along with 12 companies they own or control. We hear more in this story from CNN. This is not just connected to U.S. election meddling, although the authority under which they impose these sanctions does include that. Uh, 38 total people and entities now sanctioned. So that means their assets in the U.S. will be blocked and U.S. people will be barred from doing business with them. I think what really raises eyebrows, you know, we've known about this list of oligarchs that the administration designated months ago. This was in January. They didn't impose sanctions then, although they did say they were coming. Today we are seeing those. So of the original list of more than 200 officials and billionaires and people connected to Putin, uh, that they designated, we're now seeing 38 of them actually sanctioned. 
And uh, that's news. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.be. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic weekend.